All right, so now it's time to put together the steering gear. This is a raw steering gear. There are two different versions, but my tractor has the raw style. Um, didn't realize my camera wasn't working. I installed the seal before I realized I had microphone signal and wasn't saving data, but we're good to go now. So the only thing you missed is me pressing the seal in. This seal is a national part number 472311. We did that. The bushings in here are in great shape. Their brass bushings are replaceable if they're not. I have not seen where to get them, but I haven't really looked because I didn't need any. We got our shims for setting our bearing preload on the worm shaft. This was a big problem. If you noticed on the teardown video, it was tore up pretty good. This is an old one of the tore up ones. Both of them were actually, but it was tore up really good. On this one, I did a practice weld just to see how good of a weld I can get on this. It turned out good enough. I went ahead and made a repair attempt on this one. So I built this pin back up with weld and then took a sander and grinder and made it match. I think it's going to work pretty good. It's worth a shot, at least for this use anyway. We will see. There is one issue here, but the way this works is when you turn the worm shaft, the, sec the shaft goes back and forth. There are some pretty good rough edges on here, but past that is fine. So we're going to go with it. This one is definitely in better shape than my other. Another thing, these are the two races that I'm going to go with. They're in pretty good shape. There's a couple little nicks, but not bad. The other two look like this. We get to focus. There we go. We got hardware, got ball bearings. Should have everything we need, unless I'm forgetting something, but I usually forget something. Well, that's when I pause the video and run around like crazy trying to find it or clean it or get it ready. And that's just the back cover. So normally, this goes here, have your ball bearings in it, snap ring over it. Same thing on this side. It's going to be our first thing to assemble. I never did count these to see how many we had. So I have 30 ball bearings. Some of them look like they might have little flat spots on it, but maybe that's just dirt. I picked the best ones. I don't know how many I need. I did not look, and it doesn't say in the manual, but we'll install them until there's no room for them. All right. I'm just get some grease over here to help hold these bearings in place. The paper towel, because I'm sure I'm going to need it. All right. Okay, only 10 fit. 10 with a little bit of room. And I didn't account for that. Will not fit on the shaft if the ball bearings are there, so let me just remove two. Two should give me room to slide that in. Sort of. So let me pop those back in now. There we go. Snap ring on the end here. Let me 
go. Okay, good. And it doesn't give any room for the bearings to fall out. There's a snap ring on the back. There's your bearings. Um, by the way, if you've seen in my final drive assembly video, which I'm imagining is going to come out before this one, I just did it this morning. Notice I painted a shaft. Any of these exposed shafts that, well, not exposed shaft, hidden shafts as far as the tractor goes, but like this shaft was really rusted up because it was inside of the housing and bare steel. But any of those shafts like that, I paint um, just so it doesn't rust up. At least the surface is not going to touch grease, oil, or seal. And this particular color really has no significance. It's what I have a lot of as far as spray paint goes. So. That's why I did that. So the pinion shafts inside of the brake housing on the final drives will be painted this color. The drive shaft that runs from the clutch to the input shaft of the transmission will probably be the same. All right, it's time to do another one. The other one's going to slide over the end of this shaft assembly. Link up to seven in this one for now. And we'll slide it on and see if it, I can get it around. It's a little different. I can't put it at the same angle, so I might have to remove some of those. Yeah, let me drop a couple of these out. This one has less room. Okay, we're there now. Let's get these in the two more. Maybe I miscounted. That's oh, right, it's seven, not eight, so that would be three more. Okay, now I need a snap ring on this side. I'm going to avoid that one just a little bit, but this one's in good shape. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I need to install this and try to set bearing preload, which basically is just make sure there's no in play in this particular one. I need, no, I didn't put the cap on the table. I need a cap that goes over this end. Okay. So without, this bearing itself sticks up above the housing a little bit. So if I just tighten this down, it's probably going to have too much tension. Too much preload. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some shims. These particular shims, I think, are from two different gearboxes. So I think I have too many. So I'm going to start with half of them, four, and see where that puts me.
The chimps basically going at that point. Like all the other bearing preload shims, I'll put all this together, get it all right, and then I will worry about sealing these shims with spray gasket. These shims, when I took them apart, they didn't have paper in between them like the rest did. Neither one of them, actually. There's something I thought about, and I actually ordered a seal for it, and I may or may not do yet. I just had to figure out how this thing would vent otherwise, but this opening here is a direct path into the gearbox. And if it rains enough and you get rain up in the on the steering wheel, if you leave if the tractor's outside, it can seep between the steering wheel and the tube that this is over and run down into here. There is a little hole in the bottom of the tube, but no guarantee that wouldn't be plugged up. But it still seems like a path where water can get right into the steering gear. I might put a seal there. One will fit. We'll see. I'll decide on that when I do the final seal on the shims. Okay. Well, it looks like I'm going to need more shims than I have because I cannot turn this shaft now. I can, but barely. I'm going to tap on the end of the shaft with a mallet just to make sure that bearing is seated fully. Yeah. Definitely need some more shams. And try two more. Spins easy. There's a little bit of preload there, or a little bit of in play there. So I think yeah, we're gonna remove one of those shims. Should have put one in, in the first place instead of two to start with. And at least now I know one's right. Okay, so these outer two. One's pretty thin, one's pretty thick. I think I'm going to take off the thicker one. Well, that's a little stiff. Guess I should have put the thicker one on there. Okay, so it's a little too tight now. So I'm going to get rid of this thinner one and install this thicker one. It's good. Absolutely zero play. That's what we needed. Awesome. So once we grease this up, put this in place. Should work something like that. Okay. 
All right, that'll be the next up. Grease this up. I know this is going to have oil in it, but Coating this so it doesn't rust while it's sitting in there because I'm probably not going to put any gear oil in it until it's on the tractor so I don't lean it over and spill it. So here's the question Did I grind this even enough that this will work properly? This slack we have is adjustable. There's a set screw in the middle of here that presses on the center of the shaft. I would actually press it in to take up that slack. I cannot adjust that until I get this cover on. And to get this cover on, I want to use RTV to seal it. I'm going to do that to be really clean. So I have some brake cleaner on this rag. I know this one's already clean, but I'll wipe it with the clean side of this anyway. This is a pretty tight fit, so I do not need much. Thin coat is plenty. These upper two screws, the threads go all the way into the cavity where the oil is, so I'm going to add a little bit of sealant to the threads so oil doesn't wick up through there and leak on the outside. I'm not going to add too much, I don't want it bulging out around the lock washer. I'll end up painting these anyway. Excess RTV. This fresh painted surface it actually buffs off really good. Originally, I was letting it dry and then peeling it off, but tried this on one part and works very well. Couple things to do here. For one, this bolt is below the oil line. We'll put a little RTV on it. Makes a little bit of a pain if I have to adjust it later, but not too horrible. The other thing. Forgot to put a dab of grease on the surface of the 
shaft that it rides on. So I'll put it a little bit on the tip of that. If everything goes well, I can avoid the threads with the grease. Get the lock nut on here. It spins pretty good. One end of travel. It's a little gritty. Halfway through middle. And it spins good on the other end of travel. So where it lives most of the time in the center. It's a little rough. It's a worm shaft that's rough right there. I mean, I'm, it's just hard turning it with greasy hands. It won't be a big deal in the tractor with a steering wheel on it. And actually, once I turn it under load, it might seat in and be fine. Probably keep an eye out for a parts gearbox to get the shaft out of, but. Still gonna be better than it was. It had a lot of slack in it. It had maybe eight inches of slack in the steering wheel moving back and forth. So we're gonna go with that. We will not put the pitman arm on until we're on the tractor. Easier to center it that way. I was supposed to mark center on this so I knew when it was centered while I had the cover off. That would have been the easiest time to do it. But. Okay. Gears built. I just kicked the camera. I was going to install the tube on this and everything, but I might just hold off on that. The tube is painted nice and it's hanging up out of the way on the ceiling right now. And it's probably safer for it if I leave it up there out of the way. The tube's real easy to install after this is mounted anyway. Slide it over, but it's our completed gearbox. Minus the fill plug and the oil. All right, before I posted this gearbox video, I just wanted to make a quick update. Remember how it had that rough spot in it? Well, I wasn't really liking that. I was going to see if it would wear out, but I didn't like that. So. What I did is I worked it back and forth through it so it would leave a mark on that pin and then slowly buffed away the metal, reinstalled it, tried it again. So right here I'll just show you a picture of what it looked like after I marked it up and then I don't have any video buffing it down or anything but it'll give you an idea. And now this thing is smooth as can be. So we are way better now. Smooth as can be and no slack. All right, steering gear is complete. I believe my next video will be the PTO assembly or the rear differential. I need to do some work on that. I'll see you on one of those.